Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a park and a playground for all of your city building needs. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please do remember to subscribe to the channel and click the little bell next to the subscription button and that'll ensure that you get all of my stuff sent directly to your sub box so you won't miss all of these awesome videos that I'm putting out for you guys. And not only that, Feel free to leave a suggestion. The reason that I made this is because somebody actually suggested that I should make a park. And I thought it was such a cool idea that I absolutely decided to do it. Thank you so much for all of you guys that have been supporting this series. It's quickly become my favourite one to make on the channel. But without any further ado, why don't I show you how to make this awesome park and playground for you guys. I really do hope that you enjoy this one. So, just before we start building, ladies and gentlemen, I should let you know that these are all of the materials that we are are going to be using for our playground. Please make sure that you have access to all of them and enough of them as well. I know there's quite a lot of things to grab so do make sure that you have access to every single one of those. Also just to let you know later on I am also going to show you how to make a small park around your playground. That will require a load of other materials as well however I will show you all of those later when we get to that point. The amount of space required to make your playground is a 23 by 28 block area so please do make sure that you have enough room to build this if you are only interested in the playground that's the only room that you need however if you are also interested in making a small park around your playground just so they all goes together nicely then a 50 by 50 block area is roughly the amount of space that we are going to be using you don't have to make this larger grid, just make sure that you do have some playroom around your playground. And that's it. Pause the video if necessary, make sure that you have all of the necessary materials, make sure that you've got enough room to make whatever part of this build that you're interested in, and once you're ready, we can begin. So, step one, playground friends, come all the way to the back right hand corner of your grid. So this is the white playground grid. You want to count down from the back right hand corner, one, two, three, and then count left, one, two, three, four. You see that way, if you've made the grid, we're both starting in the same place. Place two birch fence on top of this position, one, two. Then place two oakwood slabs on top of the fence, one, two. Extend the upper slab towards you by five. One, two, three, four, five. Extend that fifth slab down one and place two birch fence underneath it. I then want you to extend the fifth slab across and I want you to first of all place a birchwood slab and then place three oakwood slabs. One, two, three. Three. I then want you to extend the oakwood slab down and connect it down to the ground using birch fence. Then continue extending the third oakwood slab backwards by five. One, two, three, four, five. Extend down, connect down to the ground using birch fence and extend the back across using oakwood slabs like this. Fill the middle of this in using birchwood slabs. Turn the four corners upwards and place four oakwood planks on top of the corners. So, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. I want you to then place a birch fence on top of each one of those four corners. I want you to place birch fence coming across the bank, connecting both oakwood planks together. Coming down the right hand side, connecting those oak planks together. Place them on the front on top of the oakwood slabs as well. But on the side here, I want you to place two fence coming inwards from the front and one coming inwards from the back, like this. Once you've done that, 
I want you to place stairs coming downwards from the birch wood slab that we placed earlier. It's quite easy, you just want to place a mixture of birch wood stairs and then oak wood stairs coming down towards the ground. I like to alternate the colours, this, this little playground is quite nice and bright and colourful. What we are now going to do is we want to place red concrete on top of the pair of birch fence that we have on the left side, the front and the back, join them together, extend them forwards and backwards so that they overhang. I want you to place two spruce trapdoors coming outwards from the red concrete that is in the empty position on the left here. So that'll be one spruce trapdoor and then another. You'll probably have to crouch to place it. I want you to place iron bars coming up from the ground to meet that second spruce trap door. And that's basically just like one of those poles that you slide down sometimes, like a fireman's pole that you find on playgrounds. What we are now going to do is we are going to chuck away these materials, all of them except the orange concrete, right? And I want you to grab yellow, lime, and light blue. So on the opposite side of this little play area thing, I want you to place light blue concrete on top of the birch fence and join them together in the middle and also extend them outwards exactly how you did with the red concretes. Coming upwards diagonally from the red concrete area you want to have a similar orange concrete area. I probably shouldn't have got rid of that red concrete should I? That'll teach me. <laughs> Coming inwards from the blue, we are going to have a lime concrete row. And then in the middle, joined above, we will have yellow concrete, like this. All of those concretes want to be extended backwards and equal in length to the other previous rows. So it all wants to be the exact same length as each other. Just like that. The end result should look like this, and that's pretty cool because that is a really cool little play area that you can run upon and slide down the pole and stuff if you could actually do that in Minecraft but you guys get the idea it does look good though okay so for the next thing that we're gonna make we're going to require a roundabout which requires all of the colors that we have plus some quartz slabs we also need rails minecarts and oak fence Find the location of the fireman's pole at the bottom, the iron bars. Where it touches the ground, I want you to move to the left by seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Place a lime concrete. Left of that, a red. In front of the red, place blue. Left of the red, place orange. Above the red, place yellow concrete. Extend the red concrete upwards an entire row. Place oak fence on top of all of the remaining colours except the red. We then want to place quartz slabs as a trim going all the way around the upper half of all of these colours that we have placed. Just like this. You could leave it at that but I think it's quite fun to add rails to the outside of this and place a minecart. As this is a roundabout, I'm sure you guys must have seen one of these before. Surely every country must have a roundabout. And basically all you do is you would get onto the roundabout in normal circumstances and you can spin it around and it goes round and round and round. But the way that we get around this is that we can kind of shove ourselves around in a minecart because we can't really actually do that in Minecraft. We can't have it spinning all by itself without maybe some complicated redstone or something. But it's just like a cool little thing to have. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of some of these materials for the moment. There's a lot of material switching in this particular tutorial because we need a lot of stuff. And we need oak fence, birch fence. We will also need some iron bars. We will need string. We're even going to need some grey concrete. And we will need loads of colours. So grab, you'll need all of the carpets basically, but I'm only going to grab two at the moment. Okay, so I want you to come to the front left-hand corner of the play area, or 
I, I don't even know what to call this, but you know, the, the big play wooden thing. Um, I want you to come to the front left hand corner where we have this birch wood fence that touches the ground. So from this birch fence, I want you to count to the right and I want you to count eight blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And on top of this block, I want you to place two birch fence. Extend the second fence inwards, up two, left two, and then down two. Extend left and down, like this. Extend the middle upwards, all the way up at the top, and then extend that middle block across by seven blocks using birch fence. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Place an oak fence on the end and then create the same shape as you have on the opposite side. You extend the fence down, left and right, down by two, out and down. And on the other side, down by two, out and down. Just like that. So now we have a swing set frame. Use iron bars and extend the first birchwood fence downwards on both sides. Extend them down by three. One, two, this is quite fiddly by the way. Three, and then one, two, and three. Like that. I am going to grab sand because I don't have it on me. I am going to also, leaving a gap of one coming inwards, place a parallel row of iron bars coming in from both sides, like this. So we want to have a one row gap in between both sets of iron bars on the left and right, like this. So when it comes to these seats, you actually have a couple of different choices. Not only do you have a couple of choices determining what color you would like these swing seats to be, but I have chosen to make the floor of my swing set gray concrete. Now, the reason that I've decided to do this is because when I had sand for the base of my floor originally, I thought it looked a little bit too boring. So underneath certain parts of the playground, I made underneath the seesaw grey concrete and I made underneath the swing set grey concrete. It makes the area stand out a little bit. So, not only can you choose the colour of the carpet for your swing, but you can choose the material. If you're happy with sand, use sand. If you think that you may prefer some grey concrete, use grey concrete. It's important because we are going to place string in between the two sets of iron bars and then the carpet on top. So, to save you having to destroy and remake and all that fun stuff, then you're going to have to just make a decision. The choice is yours. Once you've determined all of that, we are going to grab all of the colours of the carpets, right? The carpets are going to be in a particular order. We need first, red carpet. We need orange. We need yellow, green, cyan, light blue, purple. We need magenta and then pink. We are going to place these in that order on top of the swing set because I feel as though that it makes it look a little bit more interesting and colourful and it kind of fits the vibe of the park a little bit. Okay, so now that we have done the swings, we are going to focus on the seesaw. The seesaw is going to require either sand or grey concrete for this next part. I'm using grey concrete, you can use sand. We need string. We need six colours. So I'm going to use red. We need, I'm going to use orange, yellow, lime. I don't want to, I'm going to use 
light blue carpet and I'm going to use magenta. Additionally, we're going to need oak stairs. Counting forwards from the front left hand corner of our swing set, you want to count forwards by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We're going to destroy this block and place a grey concrete here. Destroy 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 blocks coming forwards like this. We are then going to place on the left side and the right free string coming towards the center on both sides. You want to place back to back upside down oakwood stairs in the middle. We're going to place going from left to right red carpet, orange, yellow, lime, light blue, magenta, like that. I think that that's actually the last time I'll ever need the carpets. So I'm going to just save the grey carpet and the string and the oakwood stairs and I'm going to get rid of these. We're also going to need to use some birch fence gates and I want you to place a birch fence gate on both sides open of the seesaw so they're kind of like the handles that you'd have to like hold on. The last thing that we kind of have to make in the terms of like the fun sort of things that you can play on on the playground is the slide. The slide requires red concrete, yellow, lime concrete, it requires ladders, we're also going to use some oak trapdoors and some birchwood stairs, or some quartz stairs actually. Counting from the front right corner this time of the swing set, I want you to count forwards and leave a row of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Count left one, place a red concrete, yellow, lime. In front of the lime, place a quartz stairs and an upside down one underneath. Quartz stairs in front. Place one quartz stairs on the ground in front of that quartz stairs and then an upside down one underneath. Place some ladders coming up the back of this and then place oak trap doors on the sides of the stairs as kind of a little bit of a safety. You might even want to place them all the way up at the top as well which is it's quite easy to just place a block just in the middle on top of the lime and then it uh, then it's quite easy to place and those are pretty much all of the fun things that we can play on on our playground if you want to add additional features then you may want to perhaps like add a bench which can be made in a multitude of ways but if you use any stair block it, it can literally be any and then if you use any trap door block you can add, say, a bench on the left side of the park, and it can you can even it up. Maybe you want to have like a bench where the seesaw is, and maybe you want to kind of like line it up so that it's right in the middle of the seesaw, or maybe even a little bit bigger. But all you would do is you would place spruce trapdoors around the stairs, and it's as simple as that. And that's all you've got to do. What I would also recommend doing, and I'm just going to dump all of these materials is we're going to need to grab some grey concrete, sand, and additionally some sort of slab block. Now I quite like smooth sandstone slab, how or smooth stone slab I should say, or you could perhaps even use quartz, quartz slabs instead, but I'm going to put a border around the park, and this is how I did it initially. I placed a rectangular shape of smooth stone slab around the park like this, right? Kind of like in a rectangular shape. This goes all the way around the border and basically all you're doing is just making sure that you've at least got one or two blocks on the sides of all of the things that you can play on, right? And then if you join the corners inwards like this, just knock off a couple of blocks of the corners and maybe even join them together like that. So like you've kind of got this formation, right? So 
if you just add a corner inwards like this, and by a corner I mean like three blocks on the inside and knock out the three blocks on the outside. I'll show you that again. So on the inside, one, two, three, and on the outside, one, two, three. And then on this final one, one, two, three, and then on the outside, one, two, three. So whether you want a rectangle or whether you want to keep it square is up to you. Additionally, around the seesaw, I quite like the idea of knocking out a row of grey concrete on both sides like this, right? Just like this. I don't know why I like this. And then placing around it some smooth stone slabs. I, 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 I don't know why I like the effect like I do. I, ju I just kind of like it. I, I don't know what it is about it. It kind of highlights the seesaw a little bit. It kind of breaks up the seesaw and it kind of does the same sort of thing for the, uh, for the actual like swing set as well, like this. And the last detail that I would add is I would knock out all of the grass and I'd place some sand in there instead. So, again, if you want to use sand, feel free. If you don't want to use sand, use something else that you're more comfortable with. Perhaps you want to use some more grey concrete. You want to use some cyan terracotta, so on and so forth. Whatever material you want to use, I would use. But sand goes quite well, especially because it's a playground. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is what I'm going to do off camera. Let me get rid of all of the grass and the numbers around our playground, and I'll show you what it looks like all filled in with sand. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is what your playground will look like once it has been 100% fully completed. Now, whether or not you want to add sand to it, or whether or not you want to add some grey concrete to it, that is completely up to you. But does that or does that not look pretty fantastic? Now, if you are happy with your playground, that is fantastic. I am very glad you are. However, if you want to build a small enclosed park around it, it would be a little bit more fit for your city. Like, you'll be able to slot it in, in between buildings and stuff and you'll be able to add a road around it and it won't look out of place in a city environment. Now that will require all of these materials that you can now see on the screen right now. So please do make sure that you have gathered all of those, make sure that you have enough of them, make sure that you are ready and if you do indeed want to build the park around it then that is what you're going to need and I'm going to need it too. Alright ladies and gentlemen, I have just spent my time gathering all of the materials that I think that we are going to be needing. Please of course pause the video if you have to do make sure that you have all of the materials that I recommend make sure that you've got enough of them and once you're ready we can begin work on the actual park surrounding the playground so the first thing that I want to do is I want to make a wall around the playground okay so this isn't going to be loads of measurements and exact amounts of materials and stuff all right but if you say come to the back right hand corner of your park and if you take the corner of the playground and you count backwards diagonally something like one two three four five six seven something like that right so in doing that you'll have a row of one two three four five about five coming out of the right and about the same coming out of the back so if you have about five blocks distance coming out of the back about five blocks distance coming outside the right and create a wall now, this wall is going to come quite far forwards. You're probably going to want to have about 20 or so blocks between the front of the playground and where the wall is, okay? So, I'm going to extend the wall across. Now that I'm quite happy that the wall is far enough in front of our playground, and the amount of space that you left in front of the playground is probably roughly the amount of space that you're going to want to leave at the side of the playground. So once you're quite happy that you have a wall that extends far enough out the side of your playground, you're going to want to extend it backwards and meet it with that row of terracotta that is about five or so blocks out of the back of your playground area. So, the goal I figure here is you want the playground to take up roughly about a quarter, if not more. It's probably a bit more than that, isn't it? Probably about 60% of the park area. It's quite a big feature, but that's the sort of area that you're going to want to have, alright? And now that you have a big box around it, 
I want to create an entrance to the box. I'm going to have two actually, one on the front and one on the back somewhere. So, I'm going to take the front left-hand corner, an easy place to put an entrance, and I'm going to extend the corner up by two using terracotta. One, two. Place a quartz slab on top. One to the right. One up. Two to the right. One down. One right. Connect down using terracotta. Destroy the blocks in the middle. Extend the, up, uh, the top up by one and place a couple of iron bars on the left and right hand side so it's just like a nice gate entrance not only that we're gonna have one somewhere around the back area right so the exact same entrance we're gonna have as an exit on the back now you could easily just have it in like this back opposite corner i don't know whether i like that idea or i kind of like the idea that you kind of just spit yourself out like so like Probably about here, right? So not on the corner. I, I kind of like it so that it's probably about here or so. So I'm going to extend this corner up by one, two, or this block up by two. Quartz slab on top. Right, up, right, two. Down, right, down two using terracotta. Destroy the blocks in the middle. Extend the one on top up one. And then iron bars on the left and right side. Keep it simple, you know? I'm then going to place iron bars all the way around on top of the wall. Now, there's a couple of choices for this as well. Like, you don't necessarily have to use iron bars. It just feels right to me, though, in using iron bars for this particular build. But you could easily use any sort of fence. You could use a mixture of iron bars and perhaps some pressure plates or perhaps some trap doors. You could use a little bit of carpet, incorporate some of that. You could easily use any sort of slab placed on top of iron bars or on top of any sort of fence. And you could make the wall a little bit higher. However, there's just something about that that's simplicity of it I do quite like so now that we've done that the next thing that I want to add is I want to add a feature or two around the park so I quite like the idea somewhere up on the left upper side here so maybe towards the middle or something like that I want to have quite a large duck pond so I'm gonna create what will be a very rough oval shape right something like this just somewhere in the park and again you don't have to make it in the exact same place don't bother measuring things out and stuff when it comes to this stuff because it wants to look organic and natural but an area like that doesn't look too bad you could even make it a bit larger actually if you wanted to because I, I didn't realize how large a space we actually did have so something like this might look a bit a little bit better perhaps yeah so it's sort of parallel to the park it looks all right like that and i'm gonna fill it up using water now this is like kind of your standard sort of duck punch you know how quite often times at parks and stuff like that you'll, you'll have a place where there's like a nice pool of water and ducks kind of just pull up and relax you know it's kind of cool to watch you can feed them stuff it's uh, it's quite fun and to make the duck pond look a little bit better, you can use some pods all, some coarse dirt, maybe even some leaves, some flowers, some ferns, some large ferns, grass, and double tall grass. This sort of stuff, right? And you can place a little bit of pods all around the edges. You can maybe like even add a little bit around, like a little bit of pods all, some coarse dirt. You could add a similar sort of thing just you know just kind of like bringing in some of the corners um even around it like if you wanted to you could make it look a little bit more marshy so kind of like this right and maybe even you know a, a little something like that just kind of like spruced around the place and feel free to add some like leaves and stuff around and feel free to add a couple of flowers here and there especially next to the pond feel free to add a little bit of grass and some double tall grass just to make it look a little bit more interesting as you get towards the actual edge people will be like sat next to and walking around you may even want to add say like a bench benches are easy to make grab any sort of stairs and any sort of trap door and you can plonk maybe two stairs next to each other, maybe even three. It's actually parallel. That's weird. It's actually like parallel to the bench that we made in the park. Um, but something like that, right, looks quite good. You can just have have something like that so people can like look out onto the onto the duck pond. If you want to add a tree next to it or multiple trees, where's my bone meal? How how did I leave the house without my bone meal? 
So, um, you know, maybe add, add like a tree in the back here somewhere and uh, maybe bone meal up a bit. Maybe add a little bit of, uh, a little bit of colour over there. You know, something like that. It's just quite nice like that like that's just a cool feature to add to your park something like that you could even add more of them like spruced around the park like you don't have to just have one duck pond you could easily have an additional duck pond over there but well what other features can you add like fountains are quite good so any sort of slab block will do and grab um water so I figure what where can we add a fountain that it makes sense maybe maybe like coming Maybe kind of like in this corner space here. So between the like front left corner of the playground and the corner of the uh, of the park. So maybe um, we, we'll do this right. You want to pick a center of the uh, of the fountain, right? And you're going to want to place two quartz blocks or whatever blocks you're using right in the middle. That's the center of the fountain. All you do is you leave a gap of two, one, two, and then you place a quartz slab coming outwards from every side so you leave a gap of two from every side like this so you kind of have like a center point and then you have the slabs around you extend the slabs left and right on every single side by one right so you've got like rows of three now and then you add a slab in the middle in the corners of all of them you can even pick a different base for the fountain so like you can dig out the center of the fountain right and you can add um, maybe some stone slabs in the bottom of it. Or you could add, you know, whatever material you want to use. Even more quartz if you wanted to. You could, you can add whatever material you want to use. These are just ideas, of course. Actually, as a matter of fact, that actually wants to be dug one row down anyway. right? Like that, right? And then, and then you would want to add like a floor to it. So, um, I think this will work. I, I don't think that this will fail. I guess I'll have to find out right now, but I'll add like the slabs to the base. Only just one layer of slabs, and I think the water might actually flow onto it, but thanks to the aquatic update, but I'll destroy this, like this, and then if we just drop water onto it, yeah, that's a, that's nice. And then that's just a simple fountain. Make it fancier if you like, and then you can even destroy underneath these slabs and stuff if you want to put a little bit of additional effort into it. But now that we've kind of got like a couple of uh, a couple of features, and maybe we'll even add a little bit more over here. So over this area here, may maybe we'll make it a, lo a little bit more um, dense and adventure themed. Maybe we'll use a little bit more oak leaves, poppies. We'll use ferns and f uh, trees and stuff. So like on this side of the park, just in front of here, maybe we'll add like a, a couple of trees, like one, two, maybe even three, like this, right, in a bit of a formation. And we'll uh, bone meal them. Is that the biggest tree ever? No, it's not. So that's not too bad. And then you can add kind of like, you know, some oak leaves on the ground like this in kind of like a sort of like a calculated formation. And you can add flowers around them and stuff like that, right? And we can we can kind of just have that all over this particular part. So, you know, just add some leaves and stuff kind of like in shapes that are sort of like pleasant to look at and kind of just have them like this, right? So... Again, that, that's just kind of like a nice nature looking area to have. And then you can just chuck a bit of bone meal down on the ground around them. You don't necessarily have to fern it and stuff yourself. So that's a decent amount of area for the park. And we've got it all nice and simple. The next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to add a pathway that will lead you around all of the pertinent areas of the park. Pertinent meaning important. So, all we'll use for this is we'll use some stone, some stone stairs, some cobblestone slab, we'll use, um, yeah, that'll actually do, maybe even a little bit of a smooth stone slab, and as we go around we can use podzol and some grass and stuff and some bone meal, but basically, number one, we're going to have to connect the entrances together, aren't we? So, we're going to dig in between the entrance here, and I kind of want to have about a two block or so path that leads from one entrance to the other and it, it doesn't want to be like a perfect sort of pathway right so just join them together with like a rudimentary line rudimentary mean meaning pretty simple and just expand that line outwards a little bit you know you don't want it to be just like straight up just two blocks everywhere but if we gouge out a decent sized area like this it'll be pretty good so 
something like this, right? That path's actually probably a bit too weird like that, to be honest. So probably maybe add it like a bit of podzol and stuff just on the sides. We'll build it up a little bit, like just because we've made a bit of a mistake, really, and making the path look a little bit weird in that part, doesn't mean that we can't fix it using other means. So uh, we'd want this path here to just kind of like come out a little bit, just like this. You know, the path might look a little bit strange to begin with, right? But the entire idea is that we want to drag ourselves uh, a few rows of stone and stuff just coming across one side of the park to the other. And not only are we going to do this, but we are going to add some lights to the path and we will make it look... Um, not only will we add some like lights to the path, that looks horrible at the moment. We're, de we're definitely going to have to add a lot more work to this, so something like that looks alright. And then maybe a bit of pods all, a bit of grass here, something like that, right? And basically, the path is going to lead from here to there. We want to mess the path up a little bit too, so we're going to add like a couple of stairs everywhere. And maybe even like take out a couple of parts of the path. Like if you had a couple of stairs just kind of like sideways wedged in, if you have a cobblestone block, every so often maybe a couple if you have like a smooth stand, sandstone a uh, smooth stone block every so often or maybe a couple add in a stair or two again like it doesn't have to be a pattern it doesn't have to be formulaic formulaic meaning that there's like you can kind of like figure out how to do it just make it random just make it look nice and natural this can be worked on. This might look bad at the moment, and we'll find out once all the stone and stuff's in there. I have a feeling that this is a horrific looking path, but we can fix it. And we just want to connect one side of the park, first of all, to the other side of the park. So, like that. That's not too bad. Maybe add a couple of more rows in here. Maybe add some more in there. It doesn't have to be pristine. I'm not looking for, like, a pristine park that's really, really well looked after, like all of the time i'm looking for something that's just kind of like fun to look at and fun to walk through so that's not too bad we can even chuck on some sides that look a little bit weird we can like kind of like this area for instance you can even put a little bit of hedge on there as well just like up the sides a little bit maybe we'll even do it here like just where the shape looks a little bit strange like yeah, that, that kind of balances things out a little bit. That's that's not too bad. And maybe we'll even have it so, like, maybe we'll even have, like, a little hedge coming up here as well. So just like that, you know, just kind of, like, put a border on the side of it. And the more detail, the more time you put into it, the, the better it will come, come out looking pretty much. Um, you could even have it so that you uh, can have a path around the fountain. Um, an additional uh, thing that you can do just to kind of like add intrigue as well is you can add some grass path around stuff too. So that's also another design option. So around the fountain you've got to imagine that people are going to be coming and taking a little bit of a look at it. So of course maybe add, uh, grab a shovel or so and maybe add a little bit of pods all around the sides. Maybe add a bit of coarse dirt. Something like that. You probably wouldn't get as many any plants around an area that you are walking on a lot but that doesn't mean that you can't have some worn out dirt and stuff you can see it does make quite a bit of difference as you go around as you add a bit more detail you can have a similar like in this back corner here wherever there's a patch of stuff feel free to add a little bit of something so you know maybe even like Again, it's just kind of like interesting shapes with leaves, with flowers in them. Feel free to use different flowers and poppies, you know. Something like that, if you like. That's a little bit close to the duck pond, but hey. And again, that that actually kind of opens up the opportunity to add a bit of a grass path. So, like, it, maybe people detour a little bit and they come and take a look at these flowers and stuff, you know. And then they walk back on the path, something like that, you know. Very small details that make loads and loads of difference. And when it comes to this side of the park that's been a little bit neglected, it's easy to add details here too. So you just add um, maybe like the, the hedge area here. You could add like a little bit of a corner on here and you can add like a little bit of pods on and coarse dirt and stuff where people might have came off of the playground and they might be walking around a little bit just for fun, you know, something like that. Add, uh, add a little bit of warm ground around here and uh, again more flowers more stuff like that you know this is kind of just the design process of how you can make it just kind of like your own sort of park that doesn't look too bad at all does it that's that actually looks pretty decent I mean and you can even add more like if you wanted to add another bench here for example where you might find like ah 
I'd, I'm not quite happy with the amount of benches. Maybe I'd like one, two, three here somewhere. I, d I don't know why I like the number three. I like even numbers for benches for some strange reason. And then uh, now that you've got a bench, it might make sense to have a little bit of grass path just in front of it. You know? Something like that. So that you can ha you add more benches, add more trees, add, add more of what you would like to see in your park. And additionally, the last sort of thing that I'm going to give you a recommendation on is when you're talk thinking about adding some lights and stuff, you can add a couple of different ones. So here, here's two examples of lights, and there's many more. So many different ways that you can add this. But you've kind of got like a standard light, right? So a standard light, you could have like two oak fence on top of each other, glowstone on top, and then some sort of trapdoor around the top of it, around the top of the glowstone, whether that be oak trapdoor, spruce trapdoor, whatever, any sort of trapdoor that you want. That's like a, not a bad light, you can kind of have those all over the place. So you'd probably want them more so towards the entrance of the park, make sure that nobody uh, unscrupulous is hanging around, you know, something like that. So like here, maybe here a little bit, here, that, oh no, so here yeah that, that that looks pretty good right so something like that but you could even have like an additional kind of lighting so maybe something a bit different maybe where this bench is for in instance maybe a little bit back uh like two or so cobblestone wall on top of each other maybe three add like a cobblestone slab coming out extend out by one and add an, a regular lantern just hanging off it so you can have a couple of different types of lights like that scatter them about the place make it all nice looking and everything and uh why, why do I get the feeling that I have just went into the deep end with this tutorial? But anyway, the last little thing that I'm going to do, and this is nothing new, I just want to add a small bit of detail around this back corner of the park here. Even if it's just adding some plants, maybe some bone meal, grab some large ferns and stuff, maybe just a little bit of plantage. I, I always do like using hedge. Um, I, hedge meaning leaves. Like uh, maybe just a little bit back here, something like that. Maybe put some double tall grass around a couple of flowers but then maybe populate the area with a bit of bone meal like this i don't mind the idea of there being like i just took a couple of ferns and stuff about the place too i don't mind the idea of um the outer parts of the park kind of like that kind of just adding some some of this as well you know just because pe people are going to be running on and off of the playground and stuff like it makes sense that the ground next to it would be a bit disheveled you know at least I think it would be. So something like that. I mean, it just makes sense to add those details. And in doing that, like, you've you've made, like, a really cool park. Like, that's a really nice park. And it's, it's a great feature to a city. Like, doesn't that look kind of cool? Like, I mean, disregard 7-Eleven for a second. But, like, next to the modern, uh, to the modern hotel, like, right next to it, it's just, like, a really cool park that you can oversee. Like, it just, it does fit into a city really nicely, and you can build buildings around this, and, uh, it will slot in between houses and stuff. Great build to add. I, uh, we're kind of done, though, right? I think that we've made a good job of this. Let's take a look. So, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We have our park and playground. We have a nice wall fortifying the park. We have two entrances, one at the front and one at the back. We have plenty of plant life and nature around the park. The area is scuffed. It's not perfect. The playground is nice and large and colourful. It's definitely the centrepiece of the park. We have a duck pond, plenty of seats. We have a fountain. We have plenty of lights. This just exudes everything that you would want out of a local park. It's nice and easy to make, it's simple, and it slots into your city. And the way that we've built it, hopefully you guys will be able to replicate it. And not only that, change it in any way that you want. Make it bigger, smaller, change the shape, all sorts of stuff. I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, please do remember to hit that like button, as it really helps me and the channel out very, very much. If you are new around here and you want to see all sorts of other awesome things like this, then please subscribe and click the little bell next to the subscription button. That'll ensure that you guys all my stuff sent directly to your sub box and of course if you do want to see something specific leave a suggestion down below the reason that i made this park the reason that i made 7-eleven the hotel all sorts of things is due to suggestions so leave it down below i'd love to see what you guys want to see and of course if you do want to see all of my other city related builds of which there are many. Check out the card system, the description below. I make so many different things on this channel. There is such a nice variety of stuff from modern hotels to parks to convenience stores to bakeries to 
all sorts of stuff. Check out the card system. The description below is the best place to go. I have loads and loads of builds, and as you can see, it's not really stopping. It just keeps on going. So, thank you so much for watching, everybody. I appreciate all of you very, very much. I feel like jumping off the top of my ice cream truck. I don't know why it is. It just makes me feel... I, I feel as though that I should do it. Goodbye.